Asato ma satgamaya Tamaso ma jyotir gamaya Mrityur ma amritam gamaya Om Shanti 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 Mother take us from unreal to real from darkness of ignorance to the wisdom of the light make us realize what life really is and what is not take us from death to immortality om peace 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 jack welcome dear devotees dear seekers finder of the truth welcome to this world so we have been over the last few weeks, we have gone over Mandakya Upanishad, we gone over Adhyara Apabada, hypnotization and dehypnotization. Remember the story of the donkey? The donkey was always free and the washerman was told and washerman showed it to the donkey that he's tying it up and the washerman thought he's tied up. There were no rope and at the end of it, the washerman was told because donkey was not moving and he, washerman did not see any rope. He was saying, why is the donkey moving? He forgot that he had tied him up with a gesture. So he was guided by the wise man to untie the donkey by gesture. He untied the donkey and the donkey started moving. Adhyara Apabada, hypnotization, dehypnotization or superimposition, de-superimposition is exactly what is happening to you and I. We are free, but we are tied up in this samsara by thinking, by putting a name, putting a form and a function. Then we found that the reality of this world to understand of the true what is Brahman and what is Vishwa Vishwa is this world which is Jagrat. At the time when we are awakened, we see the world. And when we are in dream sleep, that is called Taichasa, the Vedantic name. And the deep sleep, when you know nothing, no dream, no awakening, no senses, but you have an awareness that you, when you wake up from the deep sleep, that you had a wonderful sleep which is called Pradnaya or Susupti. From here we realize that Turiyam is the fourth state. Turiyam means fourth but actually it is through the Maya of the illusion of the Vishwa Jagrat, of the Swapna Susupti we, through the maya of this awakened state, dream sleep and a deep sleep state, we approach who really we are is the thorium. And then we realize that all these three, deep sleep, sopna and awakened state, you are present. That you are, who is that you? You are the Brahman, you are the thorium within you and I. And all you have to do, just become aware of it. Just become aware, just know it and start taking up the journey and you will get connected. And the moment you get connected, the entire universe is yours. Vedanta is saying that Sarvam Kaman, whatever comes to your heart and the wish and the thing, you get it. To understand it, we went through a little bit of the Maya, that this Brahman, infinite, vast, expanding, Brahman is vast, expanding without limit. You hear, you know, the universe is expanding and carrying on. That is the Western science is saying. Vedanta, thousands of years ago, said it is expanding without limit. That without limit Brahman, when it is connected with Maya, we understood, we call it Ishwara, God, Swaguna Brahman. Nirguna Brahman is Ishwara Brahman. 
and Ishwara God, Swaguna, meaning Brahma, Vishnu, Maheshwara, Shiva, Kartikya, or Saraswati, or Lakshmi, or Ganapati, or our Babaji, Mahavatar, all these are coming into Swaguna Brahman. We realize a bit of a research that the Maya has two properties. One is Vikshepa, one is Avarana. So what did the Vikshepa do? Vikshepa just projects it to be different. So you and I, that Adhyara Apapada tied up like the donkey, we are tied up and the Maya in our life projects that I am this body. The moment I put a name, I am different from you. Whether actually we are not. Name only comes in the Jagrat, in Sopna and in deep sleep, three states. But in the fourth state, we are all one. Oneness is the essence of this Vedanta. So, the Vikshipa is projecting. What does it make look? A stump in a half moon lit night. It looks to you like a man standing. A rope lying down on the road looks like a snake. Now the moment you throw the light of wisdom, this is what we prayed for. Take us from darkness of ignorance to wisdom of light. Take us from unreal to real to the Divine Mother. Robe appears as a snake because it distorts. You know, and that is Vikshepa and Avarana. But the worst devil, <laughs> the evil of this game is the Avarana. It makes it appear. One is projection power, one is Avarana. It veils it. It veils as one infinite Ananda, as suffering, Duksha, millions of people all around, billions of people all around. It makes infinite oneness as many. It distorts the image of who we really are. The tiny bit of Maya with tiny bit of Brahman is Jiva like you and I. And complete universe with the complete Brahman, with the complete Maya is Ishwara, God. Definition of God, Taittari Upanishad give Vedantic definition. Satyam Jnanam Anantam Brahman. And now it is telling you that the distortion of Brahman by Maya projects a world of suffering and pleasure. Pleasure is there, little, little. <laughs> but know that there will be suffering and there will be pleasure. You come to realize that veiling, Avarana, is telling you is what? Your infiniteness is controlled into finiteness. You are infinite, that Turiyam, Brahman. But you feel, I am so small, I am limited, I don't understand, I understand. I All these limitations are coming in. Eternal I becomes limited I. And the moment you get connected, it doesn't mean that your body is going to continue to live eternally. Maybe when you attain a certain status like Mahavata or Babaji, he chooses ancient rishis living 1200 years, 1500 years, 1000 years. As per the Puranas, it's quite common. That eternal bliss of Ananda, of Brahman, in our life, we become suffering, sickness, disease, misery, relationship problem, problem. So, all this we came to realize that this universe is actually is, as per Vivekananda's word, is the wreckage. Universe is the wreckage of the infinite Brahman on the shores of time, space and causation. When you look in through the time and space and things happening, cause and effect, then the infinite Brahman becomes the wreckage and suffering people like you and I. 
from there it came that this is primarily because of nothing else but the ignorant we are ignorant so the ignorance is to be removed by knowledge and that is the journey of the Advaita Vedanta for you and I to take you today I will take you through a little stories <laughs> everybody loves story so the divine protection stories of the devotees and the surrender to Lord Krishna is telling in Bhagavad Gita Tesham Nitya Vyuktanam Yoga Kshemam Baham Naham it is Krishna is telling that look I if you surrender to me Nitya Vyuktanam I will not only protect you I will grant you everything and I will protect everything that I give it to you also this statement was explaining by Paramahansa Ramakrishna if I'm thinking of God why is it I can't see God the Paramahansa Yogananda with Paramahansa Ramakrishna was sitting on the stool and he took his little towel and he put it in front of his face and he said see you cannot see me now I remove it and you can see me and what is this towel the towel is the darkness of the ignorance why you and I are suffering why is the Maya affecting us is because of ignorance veiling power of that Maya it veils distorts the world how do you get out of this Maya ancient Himalayan yogi is saying Maya ko kaatne ka koshish mat kariye Maharaj Maya ko janiye so you and I have to know about Maya then the Maya gets off from you and I you become aware the Paramahanshas, great masters, they are living in this world. They also have the same Maya, but they know. It is like Vivekananda going into the desert of Rajasthan. And he was quite thirsty and he saw one mirage. He didn't know it was mirage. He was taking his camel across and then his, the Rajasthani guide told him, Sir, that is a mirage. So he realized he's going after a mirage. So he turned his camel around. And when he turned around and he looked back, and when he looked back, he found the same mirage. But now he knows about the Maya. Shankaracharya is saying, not all the water of the mirage, not all the water of the mirage can wet even one grain of sand because it is not real so what is the message for you and I is that all our illusion that we see in this world what is science saying 2022 remember Alan Aspect Zellinger and Alton is telling this world is not real it is an illusion now Coming back to the story, so Yoga Shema Baham Baham. You know, there's a beautiful story of Tulsidas. Tulsidas used to be living at that time in Varanasi, and lots of rich people used to come. You know, this statement is also quoted, I'm talking to you about from Bhagavad Gita, it's also there in the Bible. Bible says whatever you shall seek knock at the door shall open for you it shall be added unto you seek first the Lord and then it shall be granted to you this is what Bhagavad Gita was also talking about now Yoga Shema Vaham Krishna says 
I will carry it and give it to my devotee. So Tulsidas got a lot of gift from the rich Varanasi people, his devotee. And some decoits had seen them. So they wanted to come at night and rob it from his hut. And they came at night and when Tulsidas saint was sleeping and strangely they found one little darkish and one fair two boys with bows and arrows is patrolling his hut. They were surprised. They came back after some time. Again they found these two. God awakened, not sleeping. And those of you who know Tulsidas, you know it is Rama and Lakshmana. And these two, because they had the darshan of Rama and Lakshmana, the two decoits, they transformed just by looking at Rama and Lakshmana. Next day morning they came to Saint and said, Sir, we came to rob you. We were the culprit ones. We came to own up. But Sir, as we're doing it, we're also surprised. Who are the two young men and women, uh, men who was with bows and arrow, one fair, one darkish, was patrolling your heart? And immediately Tulsidas understood. And he said, just because of I got this wealth in my heart, Lord has to come and protect me. Tulsidas immediately called all the poor people around that area and gave it away all this gift. There is another beautiful story where it says, Yoga Kshema Vaham Naham. Jagannath Mishra, also living in Varanasi Kashi. He is known to have written even Mahabharata explanation in Sanskrit and Bhagavad Gita. Now once he was correcting, the, looking at the Bhagavad Gita and he found somewhere, it is written Yoga Kshema Vaham Naham. When he came to this chapter, he said, Lord will give it to us, it's nice, it's very good. But how can Lord, why should Lord carry it in his shoulder? Vaham Naham meaning, he'll carry it in his shoulder and come and give it to the devotee. Why should Lord come and give it? It must be Dadam Neham. Lord will grant it. <laughs> and next day, Jagannath Mishra, he had cut it, that part of the Bhagavad Gita, and wrote down Dadam Neham. He went up to his work. There was no food at home. Jagannath Mishra's wife was worried what's he going to give it to his husband? And she didn't want to trouble him by saying, I don't have this, I don't have that, very good lady. And she was worried and thinking, praying, what should I do? Suddenly a very young guy comes, very nice looking, with lots of food articles on his shoulder. And he comes and gives it to Jagannath Mishra's wife. She said, who sent all this? So the boy said, your husband did. She said, really? And she took it naturally very hurtful, very grateful. But strangely found that young boy had got a deep cut and it is red mark like bleeding. She said, my God, who get that injury to you? And the young boy said, your husband did. And then he went away and lady was heartbroken. When Jagannath Mishra came back, she said, what's happened to you in your old age? That young, so nice looking boy gives all this thing to you and you beat him, you cut his cheek. The Jagannath Mishra asked, what cut his cheek? She said, I saw one mark like that. So immediately Jagannath Mishra devoted devotee immediately understood. He quickly ran to the Bhagavad Gita and corrected that Dadam Neham to Vaham Neham. You will carry it on your shoulder and give it. Understand this. There is a beautiful statement called Ananyata depending utterly on God. One pointedness comes in life as you keep on practicing. And Ananya Ashreya Tyagaha. That is Annaya Anaya Ashraya Tyagaha. Meaning, depending on the others, you should renounce. 
depending on my muscle, on my money, on my power, on my political connection, just renown. Depend only on God. This is Ashraya, my refuge into God alone. You may have property, you may have good health, they are all okay, but I know all along it is my God alone. Now this is theistic language, bhakti language. Advaita language, we follow our four, right? Bhakti, yoga, raja yoga, karma yoga, and jnana yoga. In jnana yoga, in advaita yoga, know your jagrat, your vishwa, your sapna or tvaijasa, your pradnya or deep sleep, Shushupti, all three are powered by the fourth Turiya and it is the Maya of the Jagrat, Sapna and Shushupti of Vishwa, Taijasa and Pratnya. It through which you look at you but the moment you know that the power is that fourth is Brahman, is me, Aham Brahmasmi. The moment you know it the Maya goes away and progressively your delusion, illusion cuts away. And now from memory you remember all the good things of life, not sad thing, bad thing, miserable thing and enjoy the present with the cheerful joy and happiness which is Ananda, Satyam Jnanam Anantam Brahman, that Ananda. Satchit Ananda. You enjoy. Remember good thing from memory, present, enjoy, be blissful, joyful. Know in your heart that I can create my future. How? Visualize. And when you are meditating, be still, be silent and plant that seed of your what you wish into that light which is your Turiya your Brahman, your light all around. See the pictures of the great masters, light all around? You too have. Only thing, it is not strong enough for you to witness it. But those who have eyes, they can see it. You can see that aura in everyone. Jai Guru. More on this Sunday.